Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I created these all occasion cards using a stencil and some ink blending. The stencil that I'm going to be using is the Poster Print Create and Quad Stencil Set from Tailored Expressions. This has just recently been re-released as it was actually a freebie back in Black Friday, I think. And I will be honest, poster print style was very new to me. I actually went on Pinterest, looked it up. There's some beautiful artwork in this type of style. So I was very excited to use this in my card making and try out some different blends. The Create and Quads stencils are a little more expensive than a regular stencil. And that is because they are set to make four card panels at once. I also like to use these Create and Quads cardstock packs. Tailored Expressions sells these and it is just cardstock ready to go trimmed down to the appropriate size. You can certainly take a piece of cardstock and just trim it down, but sometimes I'm lazy and I like to just grab these packs of paper that are already cut to the size I need. So I took my cardstock and I lined it up with the registration lines that the stencil provides and then I held it down with some teal tape. I will also tape this down to my work surface. The first color that I'm going to be using for the first layer of the stencil is a banana cream pie. It is a very light yellow. And when I ink blend this on using my blending brush, I am not going to be real precise. It doesn't have to have full coverage or even even coverage. I'm mainly using this yellow as a base layer. Now this panel up in the top right hand corner does have some fine lines and I'll talk about those when I get to my next color. So I just went through all of these panels with that banana cream pie. And like I said, this is just my base layer. I'm going to come in with sweet basil and I'm going to add this over the top, but I'm going to try and leave some of the tips of the leaves or just some outside areas of the leaves with that light yellow there. I think by adding two colors to the first layer of the stencil really gives these images some character and just a little bit more interest. As I make my way back over to this top right corner, there is one or two particular areas that are kind of thin and they wanted to move on me. I was probably also pushing a little bit too hard with my blending brush. So I'm just holding those areas down with my finger to make sure that they don't move. Then I'll work my way down to the rest of the areas and fill that in. Again, I just want to leave a little bit of that highlight area. So as I remove that first layer of the stencil, you can see we already have a lot of great kind of dimension to our image because of those two colors. Now I'm coming in with stencil number two and you can use the registration lines that are provided, but I'm also eyeballing it because I really want to make sure that those areas are lining up with my previously stenciled image. All of the stencils are labeled down in the bottom right hand corner, I believe it is, with a stencil one, two, three, and four. So for this second layer, again, I'm using a base layer of color. This one is a rose water, just applying that to the flowers and the rest of the area of the stencils. Again, not being super precise because I am going to bring in another color. That next color is going to be passion fruit. Now for passion fruit, I am going to bring in a detailed blending brush because I really want to focus in on certain areas of the flowers. For this one, I started out kind of where the middle of the flower would be where it's dipped in there and then blending out to the outside edges, making sure to still leave some of that pink that's behind there. Same thing with that top flower. I actually started in the center and blended out and for these tulips down here, I'm adding it kind of down towards the bottom of the tulips and then really going haphazardly over the other two panels because they're pretty small areas. So as I remove this layer of the stencil, you can see how this is really coming together. It looks like we've done so much work to this and that was only layer two. Now for layer three, I'm coming back to that banana cream pie. And again, just kind of quickly going over those areas, adding that nice bright pop of yellow to those open areas. And then I'm going to step it up once again with another color. Here I'm going to bring in peaches and cream, which is a really nice kind of light orange. And I am going to add that again to the bottoms of these tulips and blend up. So it's going to have that really nice fade and transition between the two colors. When I get up to the daisies, I start where the center point is and blend out 
making sure to really leave some of that yellow there because I think the yellow in combination with the passion fruit looks really beautiful together. And then also adding it to the sides of these larger flowers down in that bottom right hand corner. Then I can remove this layer of the stencil. It is coming together beautifully and I love how these colors look together. And now we can move on to the last layer of our stencil. For this one, I'm going to use passion fruit because this one's really just adding in some detail. Down here in that bottom uh, left-hand corner though, I am gonna switch to the detail blending brush because I want to add the passion fruit over those flowers that kind of have the passion fruit to it. Up here in the top, I switched to a larger blending brush because it was just a lot faster. And then I'm gonna bring it down to that bottom right-hand corner, really add in that passion fruit to make it stand out. Now I do have some tulips over here in that bottom left-hand corner and I am bringing in the peaches and cream to add that detail to it because I didn't want passion fruit there. I thought that would be too much. And that peaches and cream looks really great on it. So as I removed that last layer of the stencil, here we have four panels ready to go that we can trim down. So here is why I really love these pre-cut panels. All I need to do is line this up in my paper trimmer. I'm going to cut it at five and a quarter turn this and then trim it to four inches and I'll do that for the other piece trim it to four inches and now I have four panels ready to go that I can add to an A2 size card base but I am going to trim these down a little bit further I just wanted to show you how quick and easy it is to create these backgrounds and they're all different my panels are set so I'm going to work on some stamping and the sentiment set I'm going to use is called you are and I think this is an absolutely amazing sentiment set. This can really be used throughout the year. It doesn't even have to be for an occasion. It can just be for the fun of it which I really think is the best time to use your cards is sending somebody a card when they don't expect it. Now because these are red rubber stamps I removed the foam insert from my misty tool place those down on some white cardstock and I'm going to ink them up with Oreo ink from Tailored Expressions. So once I stamp that down, I do want to make sure I'm getting a really good solid impression. So I am going to stamp it once more. The other thing I really like about this is that all of those sentiments are one stamp set. So I can get all of those stamped out at once. There's also coordinating dies for these. So I can also die cut all of those sentiments out all at once. Now, because I have four cards, I did need to stamp the UR four additional times and I will die cut that out as well. When I run all of these through my die cut machine, I can just pop out all of those sentiments and I only need four of them. So the rest of them, I will just put back in with the stamp set so they're ready for another card project. While I was die cutting, I went ahead and die cut out extra pieces for the URs and I layered it together with some liquid glue that's going to add it just a little bit of dimension and pop off the front of the card. For the words, I did the same thing. I took that die cutting plate and I ran it through twice. So these smaller words are going to be layered up two times with cardstock. And this is just some Gina K Designs Connect glue that I have in a fine tip bottle. I really love the fine tip when it comes to things like that scripty you are because it really gets on that fine scripty area of the sentiment. And I am just gluing on top of a media grip mat because it's easy to clean any excess glue off. Off screen, I did a bunch of die cutting and I used the A2 postage stamp stacklets. So I die cut two out of buttercream frosting and two out of sweet basil. I went ahead and trimmed my stenciled panels down. And then I also trimmed out a piece of white cardstock that's going to be a base layer for me. And for those, I just found some rectangle dies that would fit nicely within the stitched line of that postage frame. I'm going to take one of my ink blended panels, add tape, run tape runner behind it, and then place that on top of one of my white mats. So it's going to give it just a nice thin white border around it. I think also using maybe a gold metallic cardstock as that thin border would look really pretty as well. Now I am speeding up some areas of this video because I'm really doing the same thing for all three or the rest of the three panels that I have, but I didn't want to leave anything out for you guys. Then before I add these to my postage die cuts, I want to get my sentiments on here. So for each of these, I am adding the liquid glue to the back of the UR and these can be placed anywhere on the front of your card. 
I like to set something heavy on it while I get the glue added to the words and place those underneath. Now you do have to kind of plan out just a little bit because sometimes your word may be a little bit too big when it comes to, I don't know what it's called, descender, but the bottom part of the Y. So you really want to watch exactly how big your word is that you're choosing. Another thing is that you don't have to use the word you are. You can just put a bunch of those inspirational words on the front of your card. That's one of the things I really love about this set is you can leave some words off like the you are and just use the inspirational words. You can combine them like I have here, but they are great sentiments for just sending to somebody. Whereas things like birthday or even some sympathy things are very specific, these can still be used for birthday or sympathy cards, but they're more general and I feel like they can be used a lot more throughout the year. So I had flipped over the panels and trimmed off any of the excess of the sentiment that was hanging off. And then on the back of each panel, I'm taking these thin foam strips and I'm going to add four of them behind my panel. I have really been loving these. They're very, they're pretty thin. They're not your normal foam tape. And I love it because it is just enough of a lift to add dimension to your card front without getting too carried away. I decided that my two panels that have that light yellow on them would go with the buttercream frosting postage panels. And then the other two cards that have more of the green in them would go with the sweet basil panels that I die cut from that A2 postage layer. So I went ahead and removed the backing of all of those foam strips, line those up over the postage die. There is a stitched outline. It doesn't fit quite perfectly for me, just depending on what rectangle die you're using, but it was close enough that it has a nice even margin around the edge. So I was going to add these two white card bases because it is going to give a little bit of a border, but I decided craft would look really great with these cards and this color combination. Or actually, this is toffee from Tailored Expressions. So I just added tape runner behind my postage panel and adding that to the front of my card panels. Now, these are just card fronts. I will add them to actual card bases later. And these are measuring four and a quarter by five and a half. Now, all of my supplies, including cardstock, ink, and products that I've used in today's video will be listed down below in my video description and also over on my blog. And I am super happy with how all of these turned out. I actually have another set with another color combination that I posted over on the Scrapbooking Cards Today at Magazine blog. So you can head over there and check that out. I will link that down below in the video description as well. I hope you enjoyed today's card inspiration. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again real soon.